Hello, this is Michael from League of Items, and when I'm not creating videos, I coach Rutgers University's main League of Legends team that competes in the Big Ten League and the Upsurge Invitational Tournament. Headed into our match last night, we were 1-1 to -1 in match score, so we really needed a victory. The second game was particularly interesting from a macro and decision-making perspective, so I wanted to highlight those spots here. The first clip we're going to take a look at is in the early game. Before the game started, we started talking about different ways to create a lead in the early game, and one of the decisions we made was to try out a level 2 gank bot lane. So our bot lane comes to lane late, engages on Tom Kench, and then swaps over to Tristana. Tristana didn't use either of her summoners here, so she probably could have and should have gotten away, but I think she was caught off guard and didn't realize there was a gank going on. The next play happened around the 6 minute 30 second mark. The team called for a dive on top lane to try to put Maokai even further behind. We had both of our Zhanyas available, so the chances of us dying were very low. We didn't execute the dive perfectly, but it was good enough. And it gave us the opportunity to put some damage on the top tower in the early game. And it was extremely low, so at this point in the game, we're already thinking that we should definitely get first tower. There are two different ways to think about this. So you can say, our top lander is ahead, we should be able to take that tower for free and not use any additional resources. But the optimal way to play this is to send your bot lane top and guarantee first tower because there's the additional gold for first tower and it also creates a tempo advantage. Unfortunately, we did not follow through and cash in on our tower advantage, which caused a relatively large gold and tempo swing. Instead of getting the bonus gold from first tower, we were left responding with bot tower. This is an example of Dawn doing a great job identifying that their top tower was weak and they made the best call possible by shifting their players towards top because they end up picking up a few kills and the first tower gold. My one criticism is that if I were their coach, I would also want them to take the Rift Herald because this way you take Rift Herald, send the Rift Herald to bot lane, push Rift Herald into bot tower, take bot tower, and then try to take that new tower advantage and pick up a dragon. And then once you get dragon, you can also start to pressure mid lane with Azir and the siege power of Tristana. The way this game played out, we take mid tower first and move to Rift Herald, which is good because it capitalizes on a mistake that Dawn made. When Dawn chose not to take Rift Herald after taking top tower, they lose a lot of tempo and it opens up the opportunity for us to take Rift Herald again. Once we took Rift, we decided to send it top lane and pressure the tower. This forces Dawn to decide whether they want to defend the tower or trade. They get caught doing a little of each, trade towers, but we find and engage and kill Maokai. Even though we get the inhib tower here, we give away 3 kills in response to Trist, and they immediately took away nearly 2000 of our gold lead. Next up is the 20 minute mark where we go for Baron on spawn. Dawn wasn't prepared for this, so we took it with no problem. Their response was a mid tower, which was another strong play on their behalf, but it left them overextended. We had a TP ward set up and took down Azir. However, instead of taking advantage of their wave clear being off the map, we decided to chase down a couple of kills, and since our team was split, we lost out on over a minute of Baron buff and only ended up getting one tower.
At the 27 minute mark, there is another big fight that we win, but our decision making was too apprehensive. When we know Gragas is off the map for over 20 seconds, our call needs to be clear the vision around Baron and take Baron. This is going to force Tristana, Tom Kench, and Azir to walk at us in order to figure out if we're doing it, which will make it easier for us to engage. Instead, we take way too long, and Maokai is able to TP in, which forces us off of Baron. Although we win this fight as well, we lose tempo because there were pings onto the inhibitor and Kennen was caught while walking there. Again, Baron should be the priority, but we can't do it since Jarvan is dead. Once Dawn's players begin to respawn, they immediately start calling for Baron, and this is another great call, because they can do it very quickly. If Vlad wasn't killing Scuttle, we would have had no idea they were doing Baron. We almost had a smite steal, but instead we lose the team fight, and Dawn was able to convert this lead into a rather easy victory. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, make sure to like and subscribe. GG Dawn Esports.